see so many faces, and it is always reassuring and affirming to see that um, Franken's groupies know where and when to show up. Dr. Cilio wants uh, me to be sure to say thank you to the moms and the dads, the grandmas, the friends who come. It is such a reassuring and affirming thing. You know, Frank is a strong personality, but we are all subject to needing the support and the friendship of other people. Frank writes for some very specific reasons. And for those of you who follow his work and will follow his continuing work, you know that it is to take things that can be very complex and make them simple. And as much as you might know, and I'm going to tell you this secret, that you think his books are for children, they're really for all of us. And increasingly, the notes and the suggestions and the guidance for parents, teachers, and friends is equally important. Yes, he has written a lot of books. And yes, he will be writing a lot more books. And I'm here to tell you that Frank is my, my friend. Vinny is my friend. The circle of friendship about setting intentions and manifesting what your dreams are, that's where we can be the agents for change. Now, I'm going to go get Bentley. And I need your help with something, so get ready. Bentley? <coughs> Bentley. I think it's time for us to go get Dr. Cilio. But, OK, Bentley, are you ready? I need everyone's help. He needs to hear us buzzing. Are you ready? I mean seriously buzzing. Zzz, louder. Zzz, I'm not getting it. <laughs> Come on, Bentley. Keep the buzz. Buzz! and have a seat. <laughs> Take a load off. <laughs> wow, thank you for coming out today on this miserable day to be here and support me. It means so much to me. I'd like to thank all of you for taking the time to be here with me. And some of you have traveled quite a distance to be here. Um, and I'm really um, honored to have you. I have people, friends from Canada here today. and family from New York, somewhere here. There you are. Thank you for coming and supporting me. Many of you have been to many of my signings and <clears throat> over the years, and I'm um, truly appreciative of that support of my work, my books, and the kind of work that I do is, is trying to promote social emotional growth and healthiness for children and their caregivers in their lives. So I appreciate my repeat groupies who come to my book signings. I'm very appreciative of that. I want to take this moment to thank Barnes & Noble for hosting me again here. Um, specifically, I'd like to thank Joyce Frommer, who um, coordinates all this. And I would also like to thank Debbie and Barbara in the children's department. And I'd like to thank Patty, who also works there and is helping me with this event today. Where's Patty? Thank you, Patty. Anyone have any questions? See Patty. Um, and of course, I'd like to thank my friend, my neighbor in my office, Sandy Butler Weil, who's always so supportive of me. And she sends me these little inspirational talks, little sayings every time underneath my door, and it maybe just hits me at the right moment. Um, I'd also like to thank my publisher, APA Books, and the team that puts this together um, and helps me and supports me in the books that I write. But I want to take this time to thank one of my teachers of mindfulness, 
Beth Sanchez. <coughs> I met Beth. <coughs> Beth, can you stand up, please? Thank you. <coughs> I met Beth at the Crane Center for Mindfulness and Contemplative Studies at Ramapo College while taking their MBSR course, which is Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction, and I recommend everyone to look into that because it's a really effective way of dealing with the stress and depression and different things in our lives. Beth, this book is dedicated to you. While taking your course, you inspired me by your wisdom about mindfulness and meditation. You have so much knowledge about this subject that I'm in awe of you. You're an incredible teacher and person, and I'm proud to know you. When you sit with Beth, you're, you're amazed at the knowledge base she has regarding this topic and how she explains it in such an understandable non-threatening way, and what a gentle woman you are. I remember a time I came to you in a personal kind of moment of my life, and you took the time to sit with me, and, and you offered this wonderful, caring, and sensitive advice, and you were so present to me, and I'll never forget that. And if anyone needs a therapist in Montclair, call Beth. You have, and, or if you're not from Montclair, just call Beth. Um, you have so many gifts that you share with others, and I'm glad to know you, and I couldn't think of anyone whom I dedicate this book to. Thank you. Be Still is a book written on meditation. It is an invitation to this practice. <clears throat> Meditation is a, form, a formal practice of mindfulness. The other is yoga, and we'll little talk about that a little bit later. But um, let's begin with mindfulness. Mindfulness is the umbrella that meditation and yoga fall underneath. And maybe you've heard about mindfulness, maybe you haven't. It seems to be all over. And um, a simple way about mindfulness is about noticing. Noticing what you're thinking, what you're feeling, what you're experiencing in your body. It's being in the moment, sorry about the being part, <laughs> and noticing your feelings, your bodily sensations, and without judging them. We judge ourselves very harshly these days. We're never in the moment, but instead we try to capture the moment. I was recently at a wedding and everyone is standing there, this isn't my phone, but everyone is taking, is at the wedding, kind of recording the wedding and making sure they've got it just right. So they're capturing this moment, but are they really present to the wedding? Are we really present in our lives? I remember there was a, a Beyonce was in concert and this gentleman was taking you know, video of her and she was, he was like first row, prime seats. And she's like, she stopped the concert, she says, I'm right here. And she, he kind of missed it. So, so we need to think about that. Be in the moment. Try not to capture the moment via phones or iPads or whatever. We can be so harsh on ourselves. We find ourselves either living in the past or in the future. When we're in the past, that's usually filled with remorse and regret. And that's usually where we find depression. If we're in the future, then we're worried about, and we worry, that's where anxiety lives. So we're never really present right here. We're often in automatic pilot mode, and we are often, we're more like human doings instead of human beings. So we live in this frantic world where our minds and bodies are always busy, so we have to ask, what's the rush? What are we running to? Or, what are we running from? When we have taken the time to do, when was the last time we took time to do nothing? And I often say to my patients, doing nothing is actually doing something. It gives you a moment to take a breath, to relax, to think, to reflect, to notice. 
We spend more time on our appearance, on our phones, on our electronic devices. And we're so distracted that we're not present to the world we live in. So I say to my patients, when we are distracted, our lives are impacted. When we are distracted, our children are impacted. And when our kids are distracted, they are impacted. A study at Harvard University found that our minds are lost in thought 47% thought, of the time. Half of our thinking and our lives is spent in wandering thoughts, which causes us unhappiness. Mindfulness, which includes meditation, is a positive, practical, portable, scientifically proven practice which allows our minds to be healthier and less distracted. You can meditate anywhere, just not in your car while you're driving with your eyes closed. <laughs> Don't do that. Not a good idea. And your breath which serves as our anchor when we meditate. You can use many anchors, like sounds and smells. But when we use our breath, it's free. How many things can we say are free these days, right? So, and with no strings. Meditation is a practice for calming one's mind and body. How many of you have tried meditation? <coughs> okay. How many do it on a regular basis? Good. Research indicates that medi meditation, I'm going to say medication. That might help so <laughs> I have buzz, you know what I'm talking about? Anyway, um, so meditation can assist with improving concentration and focus, calming anxiety, and reducing impulsivity, among other benefits. Let's face it, we live in a very impulsive, anxious ridden culture, right? It takes time. It takes commitment and practice. It's not an exercise that should just be done when you're feeling stressed out or anxious. So when your child is worried and stressed, you have to say more than just go, go take a breath, go meditate. It should really be practiced on an ongoing basis. It's like riding a bicycle or learning to play a musical instrument or singing a song. In the book, Bentley teaches kids and adults how to do mindful meditation. And in the back of the book, you'll notice there's a note to parents section, which I talk about how you can implement um, mindfulness practices in, for your children and for yourself and make it more child friendly. So I want to indulge you just for a second. I may be over the top with this idea, but what the heck. And it may not even be my idea, so I don't mean if someone had this idea to kind of copy their idea. <coughs> but from one seed, a tree can grow. So what if we became a meditation nation? Let's reflect on that just for a moment. Perhaps if each of us took up 10 minutes a day of mindful meditation, perhaps we will feel better. When we feel better, maybe we'll have better relationships with our loved ones, with our friends, Maybe, perhaps, we might have better relations with our neighbors, our coworkers. Maybe we can build a better relationship with our community, our town, our state, our country, and our world. Maybe we would be less divided as a nation. I don't think we can keep going on with the incivility toward each other. Something has to change. Change begins with us. So just reflect on that for a minute because a lot of the times my patients will come in and talk about a lot of things and I'll say, start with yourself. And from that, other things can grow and blossom and get better. So I want to show you some other suggestions I have about bringing mindfulness or meditation into your life 
And it could also be not just for parents. This can also be for teachers in the room. This can also be for medical personnel. This could be you in just your office. And so I want to share some of these tools that not only you can teach children, but also maybe teach yourself. These are not my ideas. This is called a mindfulness jar. And you can shake it up, and these, just imagine this is your mind. And these are all your thoughts and feelings swirling around. I didn't get an A on my paper. I, my mother doesn't listen to me. No offense, Mom. I, um, whatever. But watch what happens when we start to just be, take breaths, and settle down. What's starting to happen? Our thoughts and feelings are also starting to settle down. They're not going anywhere, they're still there. Mindfulness will say, they're still there. And we can use the mindful jar to meditate on. We can just watch the glitter fall down and you can watch, you can get this on YouTube on how to make one. It's basically water and glue and glitter. And it can be fun for kids to make. Now if you're a teacher or a Maybe you work in a medical clinic. You can make different ones of different colors. This one maybe you know, being red, this could be the anger one. Now, we don't throw this at people. <laughs> I know some of you out there, you might throw this. So we can, we can make different colors representing different feelings and thoughts. And so the red one can be anger. And so maybe you have a child in your classroom or somewhere and they, they're feeling upset. You can ask them to go and grab a jar that maybe represents their feelings, and then they could use this as a meditation tool. Teachers can also have pinwheels, in, and parents can have these in their homes and, and classrooms. So take a deep breath and... Very simple. Remember pinwheels, right? We don't see these so much anymore. You can also create breathing beads it's a pipe cleaner and some beads. And you can teach kids and adults to just take a deep breath in and then breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. And you can go back and forth. It also teaches kids and adults to breathe slowly. So breathing beads. And then there's something called the Hoberman sphere which again, I, I have these in my office, and kids get really curious about, what is that? Like, what is that over there? And then it, it opens up a dialogue for them to talk to me about mindfulness. So breathe in. Again, we could teach kids and adults to breathe through these concrete methods. So this is called the Hoberman sphere. I call it the breathing ball. And the one last one is stop. <laughs> stop in mindfulness really means S is for stop, T is to take a breath, O is to observe what is happening to you, and P is to proceed. So stop is a powerful word. Stop, take a breath, observe, proceed. This book was really fun for me to write, and I hope you enjoy and learn something from it. I hope that you can learn to meditate and with others. They say about 10 minutes. Dan Goldman, Andy Pudicom, anyone that has um, Headspace, that's Andy Pudicom, was a monk who developed Headspace. I had the opportunity to speak with him last fall and talk to me a lot about taking that 10 minutes a day. And let's face it, we spend more time on Facebook and other social medias looking at other people's vacation pictures, you know? <laughs> or what they ate last night. <laughs> Looks great, maybe, right? Or the great life that they're having because again, social media is your social resume. It's what we want people to see about our lives, not really what is their life. Or arguing about politics. So that goes back to that incivility piece. So 10 minutes. 
So now I've been talking about being in the moment, and I want to talk a little bit about uh, the present. You know, I'm talking about the present, but I want to talk to you a little bit, share a little bit about the future, because um, I have uh, a couple of announcements. Um, one is that um, my book, Did You Hear, is going Hollywood. It's not being made into a movie. <laughs> well, but it's going to be in the hands of Bradley Cooper. Um, so I'm really proud of that. Um, because they're honoring him at a Hollywood event for all his work. And um, I'll be going out there and I'm hoping to meet Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga. <laughs> That'll be an interesting picture, huh? Um, but anyway, so Did You Hear is going to be in, 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 in a gift bag for Bradley Cooper. But what's coming in March of 2019 is my next children's book. It's just called e And it's called The Buzz on Yoga. So it's going to address that other formal practice of mindfulness meditation, or mindfulness, excuse me, and addressing yoga. So Bentley's going to be um, with his friends in the garden like he is here, but he's not familiar with what yoga is. He's kind of confused. And why are all these people posing in such weird ways? And so, um, so that'll be out in April-ish. And so we'll be back here hopefully at Barnes & Noble and Bentley as well, who's meditating right now, so I don't want to interrupt him. <laughs> um, and, and it's my first book that has a sequel. And thank goodness they didn't, my publisher didn't name it Be Still 2. <laughs> I always didn't like that when they named movies, you know, 2, you know. So um, I'm, really, I'm really happy about that, and I'm hoping you're going to be happy about that as well. Any questions before I start signing books about meditation, about book writing, about life? Yes? I have a question. Why do we, I do anyway, feel guilty when we do nothing? Yeah. Because we're kind of programmed that if we're doing nothing, we're being lazy, or we're being, you know, we're not productive, or maybe I'm neglecting my children. But if you don't take that time for yourself, first of all, you're modeling taking time for yourself for your children. But also, then you're gonna you're gonna be maybe a better mom or a better partner or better whatever because you took that moment just to be for yourself. So take more of that if you haven't if you're not already. So doing something is doing some. Doing nothing is doing something. Good question. Guilt is, guilt is like, that's that judgmental part of ourselves that we're so hard on ourselves, we beat ourselves up about, you know, what we're not doing, what we should be doing, all that stuff. So, yes. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah, if you're meditating, yes. and you're kind of in that zone of cleaning out your mind and clearing it all, but then thoughts keep popping yes. back in, Good. and you're like, oh no, you can't pop in, I'm trying to meditate, and then you're right. like all, how do you get them out? Yeah, you're not supposed to. I'm glad, Bill, I'm glad you brought that question up because Bentley addressed this, in the, I addressed that in this book. Thoughts are like, are, are a typical normal thing to happen when we're meditating because our mind is like an organ that's constantly moving. It's working the way it should. So we think about, you know, your mind being a ship, right? It's always moving, but we need an anchor and that's where the breath or sound can be our anchor and where we, just acknowledge we are not, we don't, get, try to get caught up in the story of what we're thinking about. Like you're meditating and all of a sudden you're thinking about some obscure thing. And so just acknowledge I'm thinking or whatever. And just, you can almost visualize it being on a conveyor belt, moving away, or just kind of floating through and bringing your attention back to your breath. And it's, it's constantly being gentle with yourself and bringing it back to the breath. And that's where the practice comes in. But acknowledging that you are thinking, we're all thinking human beings, thank goodness, and that our minds are active and busy. And we live in a busy world and sometimes that happens. So don't, a lot of, a lot of times people give up the practice at that point because they feel ah, thinking. And there's lots of reactions to meditation like sleepiness or whatever. Right. Just don't want to stress over my meditation. <laughs> yeah, don't, yeah, don't, right, exactly, good point, good point. Hi Alexa. You set aside, good question, and set aside a specific time of day. Maybe, maybe you do it at night before you go to sleep. Maybe you do it before you go off to school. Maybe before a test or something that, you know, you can find a little bit of time just to take a couple of breaths, 
close your eyes. And if you're not comfortable closing your eyes, you can keep your eyes down just a little bit in front of you. And you can just find the time that, that just like brushing your teeth, you have a routine with that, you can develop a routine for doing meditation. Good question. Yes? How do you get people that you think should be meditating, how do you get them involved? <laughs> 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 You mean at your wedding, or just in life in general? <laughs> <laughs> in general you know. I think I think we can't force anyone to do anything that they're not, you know. Particularly, you know, even children. You try to introduce the topic, and that's sort of the reason why I wrote the book, because it's a, it's kind of a, you know, a gentle introduction to meditation and helping them just try and experiment. And that's how I present it to my patients. I'm like, let's have a, let's have some fun with this. Let's make this. You know, maybe maybe there could be benefit. And when I speak to kids in schools at, at, at schools and do author visits, I always say everyone wants to be better at grades and sports and whatever piano lessons. So this can help you. It can help you focus. Why wouldn't we give it a try? But mostly with children, if you have to model that you are doing it as well. And with our friends, you know, or our adults in our lives, having a dialogue about this practice and introducing them to to it in a gentle way. Resist when, when, when you know when sometimes when we're introduced to something, resistance you know our anxiety goes up. So acknowledging that that may be what's happening with them. Be patient, and again, we can't force everyone. We wouldn't force anyone to do anything they don't want to do. But maybe if they see you doing it, Michael, maybe they will continue moving forward. You're welcome. Yes. Yes, Stephen. Actually, at the MDSR class at the uh, Ramapo College. Right. Where there's a wonderful program at the Crane Center. Correct. So, for any of those of us who want to learn how to get into what I think you got into with best health, is to uh, learn what it's all about. They have lots of introductory to the session. Right. The Crane Center at, at Ramapo College, they offer uh, daily meditations for anyone, it's open to the public. But there's also a course that you can take there. It's called MBSR. It stands for Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction. It was developed by John Kabat-Zinn. And it's an eight-week course. And you meet once a week and have a wonderful teacher like Beth um, who will guide you and teach you about meditation and all aspects of mindfulness. And it's really a good investment that we all should maybe look at in our lives. It's not. Hugely it's not it's, it's affordable and available, and you'll find your life really changed in many ways. It certainly has changed mine. And um, they off, also offered at Valley Hospital. Beth, I think you speak you speak to teach there as well. Yeah, it's, there's a lot of it's Valley and um, Atlantic Health in Morristown. In Morristown. Yeah, just Google MBSR New Jersey and you'll find um, resources for that. And there's also people in private practice who will do that kind of work. So definitely good investment in yourself. Someone over here. Yes. Um, going back to the mindfulness, I used to bring my grandson out. Um, I've been using him and I still do. He was about three years old. And we used to do mindfulness walking around and talking. Mm -hmm. And we used to lay a blanket on the on the ground and feel the the uh, grass and talk about the grass and just talking about things. We used to lay, look at the clouds. The clouds were the first things I did with um, with him is because the clouds formed an image mm -hmm. and it drew his attention. And then we, we would listen to the birds and we would listen to the other animals and um, and the rain. We would walk in the rain with the umbrella. So there's different things that I know that you're talking about that actually work in bringing that mindfulness to a child, even at the dinner table, the different smells, and you tune them into it. And then, um, and even now, he's eight years old, and he'll tell me, 
sometimes. Oh, look, the cloud looks light because I know he is zeroing in on some of the things that we have done and we're beginning to talk about um, meditation. Mm -hmm. And so I know this, this book will help him get to the next step. I hope so. Well, there's formal practice, which is meditation and yoga, and then there's informal practice, like mindful eating, mindful walking, mm -hmm. those kinds of practices that you do. Yeah, mindful washing, taking a yes. shower, you know, yes. and just noticing, again, going back to mindfulness being a noticing um, yeah. piece that you, because we eat so fast and we don't know what we ate, we don't know why we're eating it, we're not sure we're enjoying it, <laughs> and sometimes we, we take for granted the walk and feeling our feet actually on the ground. Yes and realizing also that not everyone has that luxury. So that's a great thing that you're doing with your grand, grandchild. And I see it's coming in with different personalities and how he zeroes in on people's feelings. Mm -hmm. He is more perceptive of what is going on around him and how people feel. That's excellent. Good going, Grandma. <laughs> Good going. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that. Yes, sir. So, yeah. Sometimes we, uh, That's excellent. So you like the sounds of the beach? That's what that's what you use yeah, to the focus on. Mm-hmm. About you being at the beach. Yep. Okay. And some of that thought. Well, you can have those thoughts, <laughs> and that's okay. And you can hold on to them if they make you feel good, or bring up a nice, pleasant memory of your time, maybe with your mom or with a special friend. So that's okay. But you have those thoughts because that's what your mind does. It's full of thoughts. That's a good thing. We want people to have thoughts. Okay? So that's a good thing. Anyone else? Other thoughts or questions or concerns? Yes? Hi, this is not about my horse, but I'm just curious. So you're announcing your book in October 13th. It's coming out in spring. Yes. You have a cover art, and everything is drawn up. Yes. Now do you have to rush home and write it? It's already written, so and it's all, the, the illustrations always come last, um, and that's always my favorite part of the writing children's books is watching my words come to life. Um, so no, the um, the process is I write it, and then it gets edited, and then it goes off to the illustrator, and they do the interior, and the cover is usually the last thing that's done because they may pull from the interior of the book to make the cover. So yeah, no, I don't thank, thank goodness I don't have to rush home now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm rushing home to write another book, but not that one. <laughs> Thanks for asking that. Anyone else before I start? Yes. The concept of the bee, a perpetual creature, and then you combining it with being still, and it to me, it's just like, I can't get over that. I love that so much. Thank you. Thank you. That's why I chose a bee, because they're never still. If you've ever watched a bee, they're always moving and buzzing around. And they're busy. And Bentley chooses not, he's going to be busy, but he's going to choose to be mindful and meditate first. Take care of himself first. So that's why I chose a bee. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you.